Would you ever pay a million dollars for a bowl of stew? Eh, not likely. However, you already may have done so. In fact, you may have paid a far higher price than this. I love the book of Genesis because it's alive with stories of intrigue and passion, deception, love, loyalty, and loads more. As the name Genesis implies, it's, it's the gene, it's the seedbed of the Bible. And most of our human virtues and vices are found here. And one of the stories I really love is the million dollar stew story. Now, Jacob and Esau had never had the best of relationships. I suppose when you're the firstborn by just a couple of minutes, as Esau was, and your twin brother pops out second, but he's hanging on your foot, you know things are not destined to be harmonious. We read in Genesis, it says after this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. And so he was named Jacob. And so the twins turn out to be vastly different. Esau is wild, he's rugged, he loves the outdoors, camping, hunting. He's a daddy's boy. Jacob, he's sedate, he's sophisticated, he's smooth. He loves staying at home, chilling out of the tent, watching the cooking channels, reading. He's a mommy's boy. So one day Esau, he returns from a long and, and rather unsuccessful spell of hunting. Hey, even the best, they didn't always get it right. And on this occasion, he's been out for days and he hasn't caught anything. Have hey, the problem back then, it wasn't like now. If you, if you didn't catch something, you couldn't just pop into the local Maccas and pick up a, a burger and fries. If you caught nothing, you went hungry. And so by the time Esau gets home, he is starving. But guess what? Mommy's boy Jacob has been trying some new recipes from Master 10 Chef and he's produced some awesome spicy lentil stew. It being meatless Monday and all, lentils are the veggie of choice, especially if you're starving. And the aroma is tantalizingly lingers in the air and a true testimony to Jacob's culinary skills. As he's thinking about how awesome he is and, and whether he will win Master Tent Chef this year, Esau barges into the tent in, in a frenzy. Hey Jake, wow, that smells awesome. How about giving your brother some of that? However, Jacob is not only a homebody, he is a schemer of note. And for a long time, He's been figuring how he can get his hands on more of dad's loot when the old fella pops off. After all, he was only born second by a couple of minutes. That shouldn't entitle him to less. You see, in the Middle East, back in those days, the firstborn always got a double portion. And Jacob wasn't too happy about that. Now, this was obviously something that Jacob the schemer had thought about. So he replies to Esau, first sell me your birthright. What a reply. Here is poor old Esau starving. He hasn't eaten for days. And all he's asking for is a bowl full of stew and Jacob wants to bargain. Now realize this, this is not a small thing that he's asking for. He's asking for Esau's birthright. He's asking to receive the double inheritance. Now the Isaacs must have been pretty loaded. Dad, Isaac, inherited loads of loot from his father Abraham. I mean, you know, Abraham had lots of money. And Isaac would have added to this. So we are talking in modern day terms, a family that are millionaires, if not more. So Jacob is asking Esau to give up a million dollars or more for a single bowl of stew. Would you do that? It seems crazy. One bowl of stew for a million dollars. Forget it. But Esau replies, look, I'm about to die. What good is the birthright to me? You can have it. I reckon Jacob was thinking, whoa, dude, did you just say yes? That's unbelievable. So he quickly decides he needs confirmation. He rushes out and he calls a lawyer to come over and draw up a legally binding contract. Just kidding. There weren't lawyers back then. Makes it sound sort of like paradise, doesn't it? However, he does the equivalent. He tells Esau, 
to swear that this is a binding deal. And without hesitation, Esau swears that this is a deal, a bowl of stew for a million dollar inheritance. And we read that Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. And he ate and drank and then got up and left. Did you ever wonder where upsizing came from? Well, here we see it. Jacob upsizes the meal to include bread too, just to make Esau feel like he got value for money. So for the million dollars, he gets the stew and some fresh bread too. What a deal. A done deal. And then we read the final statement from God on this story. So Esau despised his birthright. I'm left wondering if Esau had too much outdoor air, if he was a brain cell short of a working pair. But whatever the deal, he just traded his million dollar inheritance for a couple of dollar worth pot of stew. I don't care how good Jacob's cooking was, even if he was the reigning tent master chef, there is no way it was worth a million dollars. Yet Esau does the deal crazy. But forget Esau, he's dead and dust. This is not about him. It's about me. It's about you. Would you do this? Actually, have you already done this? Sold your inheritance for a bowl of stew? Hey, of course I haven't done this. This is crazy talk. I'm not a crazy outdoor lost touch with reality person like Esau. But hold your horses there for a moment. Before we dismiss Esau as a crazy, there may be a lot more of Esau in us than we realize. You see, we all do this to a greater or lesser extent. We're all prepared to give up our inheritance, the amazing gift of eternal life that our Heavenly Father offers us for a bowl of lentil stew. God is offering us an amazing inheritance. He's not only offering us eternal life now, the gift of experiencing His eternity, His love, His joy, His peace, His patience, kindness, right now. He's also offering us this entire planet. It's beauty, the universe and beyond as an inheritance forever. Yeah, that is a lot more than a million dollars. But that is what our Father has for us as an inheritance. In fact, Paul is so desperate for us to get it that he begs God to open our eyes to see it. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people. Yet we toss it all for a bowl of lentil stew. How often do we give up on our inheritance in order to rather grab for a bowl of fame, a bowl of money, a bowl of possessions? If only I could have that new car, that, that new dress, that, that new watch, that better job, that recognition, that... In fact, I'll give up my time, my energy, my life, if you would just give me a bowl of stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the TV series or the movie, Fame and the poster, and it has a caption. I want to live forever. What an irony. The poster for fame, for money, for possessions comes with the tagline forever. And we believe it? 
We grab it. We give up everything for it. Only to find, when we have it, that it was just a simple bowl of lentil stew. It was nice when we had it. But the next day we realized it was gone. We were hungry again. We were unfulfilled. It was anything but forever. See, that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the older son. And afterwards, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what had been done, the writer of Hebrews tells us. You see, if we grab for the upsized, beautiful, smelling offers of the world and give up our inheritance, we must realize the cost. We will have a day or two, a month or two, a year or two of satisfaction, and then it will be gone forever. So let's consider well what we choose in life. Consider well what we decide to pursue. Consider well where we put our energy. Because at the end, there are only two options. A temporary bowl of lentil stew or an inheritance that will never end. Which do you want? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you.